wonderful time that one time when we were here together and and played <laughs> so oh okay i guess you see these um, these things i see them here quantum physics and romanesque art now that's kind of weird topic huh? quantum physics and the art of the romanesque period um the, and then it leads us to connectedness of the human mind with the cosmic mind. Let's see. So, you know, the, the age of Romanes art started the year 1000, ended around 1120. Um, year 1000 was very special in Europe because the European uh, people, practically without any exception, they had done things they were thinking they would all go to hell, and they thought in the year 1000 Jesus would come and send them. So it was a real stress, and then, and then the first year of the year 1000 came and nothing happened, and wow, it led to an explosion of creativity. And Romanes art uh, belongs to that. Then, of course, quantum science, you know, started in 1900. Um, and you can say, how, excuse me, are you, are you getting, how can two things like this be connected? But let's see. Um, well, to find happiness in life, you have to live in harmony with the order of the universe. Hmm? Uh, to do that, um, you have to understand the world you live in. A fish cannot demand to live on the top of a tree. It, it won't work. And something like this applies to us too. <clears throat> Understanding the world isn't easy because the world isn't what it looks like. The classical scientists said, okay, I just look at it and then I will understand what it is. But as it turns out, reality is more than you can see. And there we need some quantum science, quantum physics, quantum chemistry to help us. So, <clears throat> um, in the last century, quantum science discovered that science cannot describe all of reality. That's what classical scientists thought they could do. And I'll give you examples later on. Um, quantum science can only describe the visible surface. But there is more to reality than a visible surface. There is an invisible background. And it doesn't consist of things that you can see, but of invisible forms. But they are real because they can affect the empirical world. So they can act on us. All right. Um, invisible realm, yeah not a realm of things, but of forms. They have the potential to act on, that, on us. It's a realm of potentiality, which means not actuality. Potentially it exists and becomes real. Um, the, the shocking cons consequence of this is that science, the the experience of the world, it can't tell us what the world is like. It can only tell us what the visible world is like. But that's only a part of it. So, um, <clears throat> let's see, what did I want to say? Quantum, yeah, quantum phenomena, the new kind of physics, um, they show that <clears throat> reality exists in two domains. One is empirical, 
It's the, it's the realm of the material things. And one is invisible. It doesn't consist of things, but of forms. And science has little to say about it. Because we cannot experience these forms directly. Okay. Um, the invisible forms, they are real because they have the potential to appear in the empirical world. They form a realm of potentiality. A, it's, it's a realm of, of wholeness because these forms are hanging together and there are aspects of consciousness, of something mind-like. So perhaps consciousness is a cosmic property. <clears throat> this is a shocking discovery of 20th century science. Science, uh, since science is restricted to the empirical world, it has little to say about the non-empirical part. So it, it cannot really explain the world. It can only explain a part of it. Um, these conclusions, they follow from the quantum phenomena. Um, they show that elementary particles, electrons, atoms, they are not lasting. When a single electron or a single atom goes into a vacuum, it vanishes from the empirical world. It becomes a wave. As a wave is spread out in space, it doesn't have a specific position. Nothing can be an empirical thing and be in such a state. So it's the sort of consideration that gave me the idea that there must be a realm of such waves or forms. Yes, out of this wave, a particle can pop out again. But you don't really know where and when. So in the wave state, there's no mass, no actual position many possible positions. The thing has left the empirical world. It is in a realm of potentiality, not actuality. And um, I, we have to think that all actuality comes out of such potentiality forms. But that's not a process that we can control. So, you know, here I just have this um, simple graph. When you look at it, it's a dot, a particle. You leave it alone, it becomes a wave. Uh, yes, it, it's not some new age stuff. But, you know, there are empirical phenomena that prove that this is, is like this. So, this, oops, this is a special instrument for me. It's an electron diffraction instrument. It was constructed by researchers in my research group in the 80s. Yes, of the last century, okay? Not, <laughs> not the second last. Um, it was a very special instrument because Electrons, when the electron enters such an instrument, it becomes a wave. And it was the first instrument that saw the waves electronically rather than taking photographs. Take a photograph is a, <laughs> you have to put the photo in there, then you have to make a vacuum, then you have to shoot the particles, and maybe you have too many, maybe you don't have enough. So, you know, it's a very clumsy thing. And uh, actually, somebody in California copied this instrument, called it the Caltech diffraction instrument, which seems to make sense. And it, the work he did with it 
played an important part in the Nobel Prize, which he got a little bit later, but okay. Electrons enter this, they become waves. You can, you can see the wave nature. See, these are, these are data. So here, you see the wave nature when they interact with molecules. What are the electron waves? They're patterns of information. They're numbers. There's something thought-like. It's, it's weird, I agree. Being wave or being particle is like being empirical or non-empirical. There are different states of things, different modes of being. Reality exists, that's when you generalize, in two domains. There is the realm of visible things and of invisible forms. The forms are real because they can actualize in a visible world and act in it. So there's something actually there. When a particle becomes a probability wave, it ceases to be a visible particle. It becomes a mathematical form, a set of numbers. You can't see numbers, but these numbers are there, they are not nothing. They can act on something. The visible world is an emanation out of a domain of non-material, non-empirical potentiality forms. Normally we don't look at the world like this. So. In Western science, such ideas came as a surprise, but they weren't really new. Um, they indicate a mutation of the human mind. It's a, such a way, change of thinking, it's like a mutation. Um, many people get mad. I, I could send you some nice email that I get from people get really nuts. You, you are louse, you, you. Someday, that's the idea. Science, we will know everything. Someday we know everything. I usually say, yeah, someday the communists said we will all be millionaires. <laughs> now they're all bankrupt, you know, so. So in, in contrast to this, um, the, the thoughts, yeah, these thoughts aren't really new, actually, maybe in science, but you find identical views of the world in the age of the Romanist artists, from 1000 to 1120 about. Um, these artists believed that reality is is a mystery and in their art they wanted to make visible the, the order of this mystery. They wanted to reveal this mystery to, to the people. Romanesque, um, Romanesque sculptures and paintings, they aren't realistic meaning the artists, they didn't want to reproduce something that you can see, like, you know, a photograph reproduces it. Um, the, the visible forms that they painted they have a hidden meaning. They represent a non-empirical part of reality. Non-empirical, all right? Many people say, or have this view that they say, oh, these people, they painted like that because they didn't know and they didn't know any better. They didn't know yet to paint as beautifully realistic as artists a few hundred years later. No, I think they painted exactly the way they wanted to paint. 
They could have painted differently, and, but they didn't want to make photographs. Um, they wanted to, to present an essential, non-empirical part of reality, make visible the invisible. They used symbolic forms to do that, to show that existence, to show that such a world exists. And quantum physics, it uses forms, non-visible forms to explain the world. It's, it's very similar. It tells us that an invisible uh, order exists. Uh, Paolo Guillermo de Saleon um, is a Portuguese architect, and he wrote about these people, Romanesque temples that are built to resonate the order of the universe. like an antenna. The properties of the human body, of a temple, of the universe, all are one. Reality is a wholeness. The temple is like a true emitter and receiver. It is constructed as a true cavity of resonance and amplification. So, um, to, to resonate the, the hidden order, the construction of such a, a temple, it was a science. But these people didn't really talk about this. It, it was a secret, that it was their secret. The human body, that's part of the philosophy, human body, the order of the world, the mind, all are one. Yeah, we don't need this. So, I've said enough. Let's have some fun. It's, it's late. Um, maybe I shouldn't say that, but it occurred to me that for 50 years, it, it was my passion to drive through France and parts of Italy and, and Spain every year from one church to another. They are such beautiful places and they are so quiet, there's nobody. And uh, it may sound strange, but sometimes when you sit in a place like this, you get a strange feeling of, of some presence. They are so beautiful and the, the artists or the architects, they didn't have paper to make drawings. They didn't have anything to write or so. They, and yet this is full of, of parts which have to be right within a a tenth of a millimeter, or they wouldn't fit together. Beautiful, beautiful. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Some are in, in towns, but many are just in the countryside. And it's a wonderful experience to to drive there and then go inside. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. It's quiet. It's and the the ratios of things are so beautiful. from top. 
So I just wanted you, you know, to get an impression. Um, there are probably thousands of these places. It's amazing, but they were all in, in the countryside, so nobody saw any reason to destroy them, you know. Um, yeah, you know, I quoted this, a temple must reflect the order of the universe. Here's a temple built in Fayetteville, Arkansas, 50 years ago. It reflects the order of the universe. Well, maybe <laughs> I shouldn't say anything. Romanesque art, in their, in their sculptures, they wanted to make visible the invisible and wanted to show the existence of a transcendent world. Yeah. Look at these things. Of course, this is all stone, cut out of stone. Beheading of, of St. John. Okay, I want to have my head. Fine. Here, here it is. Daniel in the lion's den. <laughs> These guys can't wait. And he's just thinking, hmm. And they had all kinds of magic beings like asps and, and basilisks. <laughs> and they showed them in stone like other things. Acrobats. So, um, sacrifice of Isaac. Want to have my head? Huh? Yeah. So, I hope it gives you an impression how beautiful these things can be. So, Benoit sur is a special place. They have so many art. Um, Annunciation of, of Mary. Blessing Christ, fly to Egypt. It really doesn't matter, you know, what kind of stories they've printed or not, but it's just the beauty of the faces. An angel uh, and a demon fighting for a soul. <laughs> so. Well, Christ's blessing. Um, original sin. Oh man, it was so fun. So I hope it will give you an impression of this kind of world that still is a the creation of, of man, one after another, oops, then the person is there, yes, <clears throat> one of the places I really like very much, you see, is outside, I don't understand, um, the French, they let this, it rains on it, ice on it, and anything. And it's so precious. That's all this same church. And um, what have we said in quantum physics? There's a non-empirical part of the world. It is real and we depend on it. The teaching of of ancient sages, the discoveries of quantum physics, all are one. So, in sacred places, like these churches, you have the feeling that at one time, the cosmic spirit burst out of the ground and cast itself in stone. Sometimes you can sit there and you, you have a strange feeling, something of some special force. 
Yeah, and you get a good feeling when you read this book. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, if, do you have questions? Normally people don't have questions because I explain things so clearly that... <laughs> I have a question. So, uh, what I've been trying to understand is in quantum mechanics, in the collapsing of the wave function, in the subatomic level, subquarks, everything is potentiality and is dynamic. And non empirical. Right. Invisible. Invisible. But how come when I, when I, when I put my hand next to, next to my other hand, it doesn't go through. What, what's, the, uh, what's the element that turns these subatomics into bio, well, into organs, into um, what, what do the physicists, scientists it's, have it's to say? Even, about? It's even more, more weird than that because, you know, you can say, okay, this is solid stuff. It's filled with matter, right? No. It's, it's atoms, it's filled with atoms. But what are atoms? Atoms, 99.999% of the total mass is in a nucleus. The nucleus is 10,000 times smaller than a space that the atom claims. So that space is practically empty. Yet, when another atom comes, Say, R -r 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 get out of my space here. They, they feel it. Maybe they can form a bond. Okay, then they get closer together and stay together. But when they can't find a bond, it, there is a repulsion, even though it's practically empty. It, you see that you know this world isn't uh, is so clear like classical physicists thought the world is. Did I forget your question or did I answer it? The question is, it's mostly space. Pardon? Our, our, our body, for example, is mostly space. It's, it's space because you're saying the nucleus is... It's also empty. It's, right, it's yeah. empty. Yeah. And, and yet it's solid because, you know, I can't put my fist through my stomach, for example. Right. And so my question is, I mean, I understand bonds and, and molecules and all that kind of stuff, but um, what, what's, what's the thing that animates it? What is the thing that does what? An animates. Animates. animates these. Yeah. You mean what is life? <laughs> if I would know that, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> You're right. No, I mean... How, how do material things become alive? We don't, we don't know that. But it is less disturbing when you accept, well, there is a non-empirical world. It, it must have to do with it. it the the non-empirical can actualize in forms, material forms, and, you know, that's what I think it actualizes as forms in our mind. And we don't understand the world because we look at it and say, oh yeah, that's that, that. No, because the forms in our mind and the forms outside, they are, from the, they are the same kind of forms, except some are material and some are mental. They come out of the same mental background. It makes sense to think that Hundred years ago, you could not have thought something like that. It would have been, you know, completely stupid. No more questions? I'm amazed because usually I explain everything so clearly that there are no questions. Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, so then, can the non-empirical <clears throat> be considered the, let's say, for the human form, um, or 
other forms, of life forms, uh, the subtle physical and the mental bodies and spiritual bodies and dimensions and so forth? What was the question? I'm sorry, there was a part uh, of it here. So the non-empirical forms, we have the physical bo body, but can it be the subtle physical, the mental bodies, the spiritual bodies, and dimensions that are, you know, then informing the five elements and the creating a physical. Okay, my basis you know, so for this uh, was, I mean, there's so many details that you, uh, when you take a particle like an electron or a molecule and you put it in a vacuum where it is not interacting with anything or the interactions are very little compared to the ordinary world, then these things become waves. How do we know? Because if in this instrument there is a wall with two slits in it, the waves go through there and behind the slits they interfere. The waves are not visible. But they make an interference pattern and <clears throat> when you interact with these waves, a particle will pop out again. Where does a particle pop out? You cannot predict it. Some will pop out here, then there, here, here, here. But when enough, many enough have done it, you get an interference pattern, like from waves. Because the waves, they interfere it, and then a particle comes out, and there are many particles, they show where the waves was tall, where it is less, and so on. So, um, the waves are invisible. Why? Because they don't have any mass. They don't have energy. They're just forms. You can't see forms. Okay? But you have to think they are there because you see the interference pattern. Okay, why? Then you can say, excuse me, you, you're telling me the particles, they, they vanish spontaneously from the world? Why are there things that are stable? They have electrons, why don't they do anything? Because if there is an electron in there, it really would like to vanish. So when it says, okay, goodbye, I'm out of here, the other guys come and say, no. You stay here. They interact, and the interaction keeps it empirical. There are, in a way, you know, there are so many, five minutes, yeah, you have to tell them not to ask me anything in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything else? See, it's already over. Oh, okay, sorry. Sort of a follow-up to the question that was just asked. If given that there's so little that we know about waves and what they are, other than what you, you're saying in terms of interference and popping into particles at times. You know, how, I have a very, very hard time to understand. I'm sorry? We can't, hear. Oh. we can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that better? Is that, can you hear me now? Huh? Monitor? Okay. That's the monitor? <laughs> I don't know how to use this. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh. oh. This way or this way? Am I hearing something? Okay. Hello. Are, are, you able, are you able to hear me now? Is that... Can you hear me now? No? 
I, I can hear, yes. Okay, thanks. I'm not sure I understand it, but let's try it. Okay, so just going back to kind of a follow-up question to what was just asked in terms of waves, and given what you were saying of how little we understand what they are, what waves are, I'm having difficulty understanding how we know, well, I'm not, maybe, perhaps I'm missing something, but how can we say that waves are numbers? If you could elaborate upon that, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't, can, I didn't really. Why are, why, are the waves, why are the waves numbers? Why are the waves numbers? There are certain questions you cannot ask. By that, I'm not saying it's a dumb question. No, it's a very good question. Um, are there numbers, or is, is it only our description of them that needs numbers? And it, in reality, it, it doesn't have anything to do with numbers. You know, such a possibility exists, but There are forms. The forms can be expressed in, in numerical relations, in numbers. They don't have units of matter or energy. Yeah, that's why I said, so they're just numbers. Um, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> but you see what I want to say? <laughs> that you reach a you reach a level where anything you say is incomplete or not quite clear or certainly always surprising and to some people annoying. <laughs> but, but certainly, you know, one thing is true. You, you can't say anymore, oh, yeah, it's a particle. It's, a round little thing like a football, and no, it, that is it's not. Are you looking for trouble? <laughs> We're probably already done. Huh? We're done. You are done. <laughs>